home delivery. But I find it difficult to believe that branded 7-Eleven kind of stores will survive or will replace these Kiranas. I think we'll either see the Kiranas or you'll see uh, dark stores or you'll see large stores, but not necessarily. We're never going to be a Tokyo in terms of right. uh, aggregated uh, supermarket uh, or small store uh, organized retail chains. That's not going to happen. So, you know, we hear a lot about how, you know, Kiranas will survive. And I, I agree with you, they will. Are, are there things that we, you know, from, a, from an industry standpoint um, or uh, that, that is missing today that will help Kiranas thrive? Um, <laughs> and is, is there something that, because we see a lot of people trying to do a lot of things for Kiranas, but they're doing it so that they can get something out of the Kirana as well, uh, outside of money. Uh, you know, whether it's data so they can give them more loans or they can give the consumer that's coming in more loans or data back to the FMCGs. But is there something that you feel is inherently missing um, that will really help empower local stores? You know, the reason for death of local stores has nothing to do with uh, POS or with range or with private label. It has to do with two things. The, the kids... The owner's kid gets educated and doesn't want to sit in a store. So the education of the child, of the current Kirana guy, uh, makes it non-cool. And therefore, you see this, for example, in apparel, where a whole, bun- a whole bunch of multi-brand outlets in smaller cities have now become uh, exclusive brand outlets of larger brands because the child who got educated is more comfortable sitting in an air-conditioned store which has a big brand name outside and which has a uh, closed door so that he looks cool amongst, you know, in in his gang rather than sitting in a multi-brand outlet with thans and with unbranded stuff. So it's the generational shift of the owner who was uneducated, very comfortable sitting as a panwari versus his son uh, who doesn't want to do that or daughter. Uh, And the second thing is the... Um, replacement or the alternate value of the land that he owns. And in a lot of places, it might be on Pagri, it might be a piece of land plot that he loans, but he, the, the alternate revenue that he gets is uh, becoming occasionally more exciting to him than what he makes in this store. Uh, especially as a lot of these stores have mundus who are paid below minimum wage and who, you know, sleep literally on top of the store or on top of the than in the store and stuff. So as, as some of that labor is vanishing and they look at the, um, you know, replacement value of what they could get um, and they suddenly look at it and say, do I want to really see? So if you, first of all, I don't think you or I can decide structures of industries, including retail, right? I mean, economics will right. decide. <laughs> and so yeah. the fundamental thing is, does the guy continue to make money or is it, better for him to become a landlord and rent that space out to somebody else. Um, It'll be interesting to see. It comes down to economics and ambition.